We're going to look at flail chest. This is a traumatic injury to the lungs. Uh, the effect that it has on ventilation is very serious. Primary problem with uh, flail chest is that you have two fractures on a rib or three or more ribs. Uh, that leads to this area of the chest that is unstable. It just moves around when the patient breathes. Uh, and so when you inhale, you create a negative pressure, and that pulls that fractured area in. And when you exhale, it bulges it out. So this caving in on inspiration and bulging out on expiration uh, creates an unstable chest, and it reduces the amount of volume that the patient is able to breathe. Uh, you can have other things occur with it, like atelectasis. The lung may collapse, especially if uh, the sharp heads of the ribs cut into the lungs, creating a pneumothorax. And uh, if that doesn't happen, uh, just the injury to the chest can cause bruising, and that's called a contusion of the lung. Most common cause is uh, a heavy object hitting the chest uh, or an automobile accident, uh, industrial type of problems where you have something uh, hitting the patient uh, and cracking and fracturing uh, those ribs in uh, several places. Now, as you are assessing a patient with flailed chest, you're going to see increased heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, and cardiac output. But one of the significant aspects of flail chest is what's called paradoxical chest movement. Now, as I said earlier, the fractured area uh, is unstable, and as the patient inhales, uh, inspires, they create a negative pressure. Well, that pulls in the flail area. Then on exhalation, the flail area will push out as we generate some positive pressure. Well, what happens is this gives the chest this rocking appearance, up, down, up, down, as we're uh, breathing opposite on one side of normal. The flail's chest would go in on inspiration. On the good side, it will go up on inspiration. So that's paradoxical chest movement. Now, this rocking back and forth of the chest calls, causes a situation called the Pendleff effect. So as the patient inhales, that chest wall caves in, but it also pulls air from that affected side, that flail side, into the lung of the good side. Then on exhalation, the lung on the good side exhales out, but it doesn't go out to the trachea as much as it goes over to the bad side and causes that area of flail to bulge out. So what you're doing is really rebreathing air back and forth from one lung, from the good lung to the bad lung, and back and forth. Well, definitely that's going to deplete the O2, and it's also going to cause the CO2 to rise. On auscultation, you're going to find that uh, in both lungs, whether it's the uh, side with a flail or the side without, the breath sounds will be diminished. Uh, this is because you got this air moving back and forth, and the patient is just not able to generate good volumes. And then uh, if you look at the blood gases early on, you're going to see the CO2 low because they're hypoxic, they're trying to bring in more oxygen and they're pulling and moving and ventilating as well. They can get rid of the CO2, they just can't get enough oxygen in. Eventually they're going to get pooped out and, and uh, their CO2 is going to start climbing, they're going to get worse in their hypoxia, and they're going to lead right into ventilatory failure when, where you're going to need a ventilator to keep them going. So all of this is going to create injury to the lungs, which increases the pulmonary vascular resistance. And that means it's difficult to get the blood from the right side of the heart through the lungs to the left side of the heart, where it can be pumped to the rest of the body. Well, this increased vascular resistance of the lungs causes a backup of fluid in the 
in the vena cava and the right atrium. That causes the CVP pressure to go up. While at the same time, because it's not getting through to the left side of the heart, this PCWP, the pulmonary wedge pressure, drops. That's indicating a drop in pressure of the left atrium. And when that pressure drops, cardiac output drops as well. One of the problems we have to deal with is going to be hypoxia, and that's due to atelectasis. And atelectasis is causing this capillary shunting, which means it's not being ventilated. Oxygen and carbon dioxide is not being changed. And to treat the atelectasis, we have to reinflate the lungs. Uh, that helps us avoid consolidation and pneumonia. But to reinflate and to stabilize that pendle off, that rocking effect, we use a system called CPAP, and that's the continuous positive airway pressure, uh, slight pressure above atmosphere. Atmosphere is considered zero pressure, so we add maybe five to 10 centimeters of water pressure to the lungs, and that helps hold everything open.